Now, the Romney Hythe and Dimchurch Railway has been around for almost 90 years. Many people in the local area have taken a trip on it at one time or another. But how much do you really know about this historic railway line? Alice Taplin went along to the new Romney station to find out more about the history of the track. Toot toot! Hi, I'm Alice, and I'm here at the new Romney station of the Romney Hive and Dreamcoach Railway, and I'm here to learn about the history of the station and how it's run today. I'm here with Danny Martin, General Manager here at the Romney Hive and Dimchurch Railway. So, when and why was the railway first built? Okay, the railway was built purely as a millionaire's folly. It's one of those things that could only happen in Britain. Uh, a millionaire and his friend decided uh, they were, loved steam engines, they loved model steam engines, and they thought, we've got lots of money. Um, why don't we build a railway somewhere? And they looked around the country, and the only place that they could come across where there wasn't one already, where there was lots of flat countryside and they wanted to run the railway fast and uh, go quite speedy, and where there was at least not too many restrictions on planning and things, they, they seized upon Romney Marsh and thought, well, let's see if we can add to the value here. And um, how has it changed since it, it was originally built? Well, uh, the wonderful thing is the steam engines happen. There is the same 11 steam engines here that were here right on the first days. They've all been looked after, they've been overhauled, um, but essentially they haven't altered at all. What has changed is that the uh, carriages are much more comfortable. You can now have 20 people in a coach, not just eight. They're warmer, uh, they're enclosed, uh, the track is better. Uh, and the workshop facilities and everything else to make a railway operate long term are all here. So uh, lots of improvements, but essentially it's the same interesting railway that they developed back in the 1920s. And um, can you tell us a bit about the types of trains that you have here? They are modelled broadly uh, on the London North Eastern Railway, most of them. Uh, they're, they're Pacific type locomotives, um, obviously operated by steam, but they're a third scale on a quarter scale track which means they're very powerful compared to the size of the rails because, of course, the people they've got to pull are full size and full scale. Um, so a very clever bit of modelling for the 1920s. Uh, the, the guy who did that, Henry Greenley, uh, certainly was very uh, clever. And um, how exactly are the trains run? Um, in terms of the locomotives, they are run by coal, coal-fired. We steam them up for two hours before we need to go in the morning. We fill them up with water but they are exact copies of mainline steam engines. So, you know, they really do operate just like a big steam engine did and still does in some parts of the railway now. Um, so considering the age of the uh, engines, is it a challenge maintaining them? Yes, it is. We, we are fortunate that we have a very skilled workforce here, a relatively young skilled workforce, and as a result, we are still able to pass that on to others. Um, but looking after them does require a lot of care, both in when you're driving them, when you're looking after them each day. They're not things uh, that you can treat harshly. And we spend a lot of time making sure the water quality and the way that they're maintained is very, very good. And um, is the line a single track or a double track? Well, we've got a bit of both. Uh, <laughs> from New Romney, where we are now, to High, there's eight and a half miles of double track, the longest double track on any steam railway in the UK. And if you go in the other direction, which is down to Dungeness, uh, five and a half miles there of single track with a passing point where we can run trains past each other at Romney Sands. So it's a bit of everything. What was the um, role of the rail during the Second World War? Ah, very important one. We feel uh, made sure that England won the war. Um, we had three roles. We had an armoured train to protect the local area and the railway, which is still here, uh, or a, a mock-up of it is. We had the job of moving the troops around the area when they went for their recreation and so forth so that they got some time off before they went for the D-Day landings. And then, in the D-Day landings, the Pluto, the pipeline under the ocean, which was a big fuel pipe to take fuel to the tanks, was partly constructed on the platform here at New Romney and taken out each night along towards Dungeness and then pushed out to sea. So uh, we feel that was a pretty vital part of the war effort. After it was reopened to the public, um, I believe Lauren, Laurel and Hardy uh, they, opened it. Can you did. tell us about that? <laughs> yes, in 1947, people wanted cheering up a bit after the war. And uh, they came down, the railway had been rebuilt after being damaged. 
and they came down and just along in the distance from, from where we're standing now there's a bridge and they put doors on that bridge and they in a rather amusing way opened up the doors in their slapstick way and said right here goes the first train and they had a massive key in their hands and in fact on May the 4th this year, just, just a few weeks' time, we're going to reenact that with some guys who look just like Lauren Hardy have come all the way from America just to do this whole thing again. And that's the sort of wacky things that go on here and make it fun. Uh, are there any other sort of events that you host here? Yes, we do. We have railway events. So the week after that, uh, we have what we call Canadian Pacific Day. We have one engine that looks like a, or two of them, in fact, that are American style. And one of them has been in our workshops for two years and has been absolutely refitted to the very best quality. And on that day, we're going to launch it back into service. So a lot of the railway enthusiasts who love this railway will come along on that day and join us for that. And then in the summer, we have a day of uh, small trains, even smaller than ours, on the platform. And, and dads and their family all come along, and some mums as well, and enjoy just playing trains for the day. And of course, at Christmas, everything changes here. Father Christmas comes along and rides on a steam hauled sleigh. And we look after about 6,000 people in the Christmas run-up. We wrap our own 4,500 presents with our volunteers. And this place is really magical for the Christmas run-up too. Yeah. We're just about to leave New Romney Station and I'm just getting in the first carriage. Uh, tell me about these stations on the line and how they've changed over the years. Certainly. Um, well, New Romney's changed in as much as when it was first built, it was a terminus uh, station, so uh, nothing went beyond New Romney towards Dungeness for the first two years, uh, and as a result of that, in order to push the line under the road at Littlestone, uh, the whole station was moved around uh, and a new tunnel built, and what we've added to the station is play parks and lots of things for children to do while they're visiting, because, you know, after a long train ride, people want to get out and do something different. We've added cafes, and of course, we've got a massive model railway exhibition here at New Romney too. Some of the smaller stations in between haven't changed as much. Dimchurch is still a typical seaside station. It's lost one or two of its uh, sidings and things, but still very busy on a, a seaside uh, afternoon when it's nice and warm and people can pop off down to the local uh, front and just enjoy Dimchurch. So the station is more like a typical station, just providing transport. Hive, the terminus of the railway, which is where everybody really comes, that's near the motorway, easy parking, that hasn't changed too much, except we've added to it a coffee shop. Um, we've got lovely gardens there, which our volunteers look after. Uh, and really, though, people can see high and imagine it's, it's 80 years ago and, and without difficulty. And of course, at Dungeness, well, Dungeness will always be one huge area of shingle. But what we've added to the, the station area there, again, is catering and a shop. So it's to make more of an experience for people. But the real fun of Dungeness is, of course, the wildness and the fact that people can see um, what, which, what is the biggest area of shingle in, in Western Europe. Uh, how many people uh, do you think ride the train each year? Well, last year we were just over 150,000 people riding on the train and another 6,000 came to visit the model railway and the stations and other, other things like that. So, um, you know, it's quite a large number. What can people expect from their visit to the Romney Hyde and Dimchurch Railway? Well, they can expect three basic things. Um, an experience that takes them back in time, especially if they came here many years ago. Lots of nostalgia, but in a fun way. It's not a museum that just sits still. It's a, it's a place to come and enjoy. Uh, they'll certainly find lots of, of ways to entertain themselves for a day. There's lots of things to do, and they're flexible tickets that enable them to go right the way around the railway. And what we have also found is that they'll find people who love their job and who will gladly spend time explaining to them what they do and they're really good at looking after people so uh, and even people who may have a little bit of mobility difficulty or they might have lots of small children we can look after them well. well what are the challenges of running a railway like this in modern times? Well yeah, there's quite a number. I mean, firstly, the railway runs across a marsh, so we have to keep on looking after the track. We run over a lot of level crossings, and that has safety implications, and we've done a lot of work to make sure that the railway is safe over those crossings. We also have got 
a lot of equipment that's aging and we want to keep it in very fine you know form and of course there are safety re regulations quite rightly on uh, the railway systems of, of the UK that we need to comply with and that means that we are always looking at ways of adding extra safety into our system we've got uh, a special device on the locomotives now that our own engineers have devised which means that if the driver were taken ill the train would stop safely all things like that that people just expect um, but all take time and effort to put in. How do you think you've changed or improved the railway since uh, becoming the manager? Well, I, th I think what I have done is uh, look at how the customer sees the railway. The customer is very much the most important person. And whilst they love the trains, they also need facilities that they're going to enjoy. Um, so we've spent a lot of time making sure that everything is looks clean, tidy, is comfortable, the toilets are all working and everything's good about that. Um, encouraging the people to do their job really well because they were already very good at it and it hasn't I haven't added anything to that I've just said great you do a good job you look after the railway you care about the railway and, and just encourage more people to come along and do the same um, yes I've had to deal with quite a lot of safety issues as well because the railway is needed to keep up with the modern times and I think just Really, it's all about enthusiasm, saying to people it's great to be enthusiastic about a railway, um, and we'll build on that. What do you think the future is for the railway? Well, the future's tough because there are so many attractions, uh, they're all very good, and we've always got to be one step ahead and one bit more interesting. What is good in, in our future is we have ever more volunteers coming along to support us as well as great paid staff. Um, but I think the challenge will be you know, getting people to, to leave their homes. A lot of people just spend a, a great deal of time watching the television and that, which is all fine, but we've got to keep encouraging them to come and turn us. So you know, being able to tell people we're here is very, very important. So do you think you've got the pricing right for uh, having journeys on the train? Well, uh, I guess everyone would always like a journey to be cheaper. Um, what we've tried to do is build inclusive packages, so there's not any extras. Once people come, they buy a rover ticket for the day, we don't keep going along saying, oh, if you want to go for another trip, you've got to pay more. It's a one-off price. We particularly discount that for families of two adults, three children, or one adult with four children. Special fares for them. Combined fares with the local buses, so that if you're coming by bus, you don't have to pay again. There's just one ticket price uh, all in. But it isn't a cheap operation, um, and we have to recognise we've got to earn enough money to keep and survive. Um, but we do little things like uh, during the holidays we were giving uh, a child's meal free with, with every group, so that helps people who we appreciate are on a tight budget these days. Um, looking at a map of the Romney Marsh, uh, there are various train lines running across it. Uh, are all of these associated with the uh, Romney Hive and Dimchurch Railway? Only the line between Hyde and Dungeness is, is part of our company. Uh, yes, we see the mainline railway on the fringes of Romney Marsh at Ham Street, and we hope that some visitors will come that way to Rye and then across on the bus. Uh, there's the line still to Dungeness, which takes nuclear power uh, elements away. Um, again, much bigger than our line, um, and you know we, we smile as we see that in the distance on our train. But only the line between Hyde and Dungeness is part of this company. Did the building of the power station affect the railway in any way? Uh, slightly, in that the bridge over the main line um, of our railway at uh, the Warren near New Romney had to be strengthened to take the large generator traffic that went in. Um, that was done by the, the Highways Authority and the nuclear energy people. Um, it's obviously created also a situation where um, alongside us there's been more uh, buildings grow up and things like that but really it's added to the interest of the area mainly what uh, would you say is unique about the romney hive and dinchurch railway in comparison to other uh, railways in britain well the uniqueness is the size i mean the visitors come just because it is so small but yet they can fit in it they can sit pretty comfortably as we are doing now uh, we're a third scale railway on a quarter scale track um, it's got its original locomotives, they all operate by steam and coal still. Uh, so I think the, the unusualness is the fact that it's got its never shut, it's got the same engines been running for 85 years, well looked after, and of course um, it's got lots and lots going on. Where do the visitors of the railway come from? Well they come, come pretty much from all over uh, the UK certainly. Uh, 
locally a lot of them are day trips so people from kent medway uh, certainly south east london are a lot of our visitors however people from other parts of the country will come and stay for a week or two weeks on romney marsh caravans hotels bed and breakfast and folks in the surrounding district as well um, so they can be from anywhere and about five percent are from uh, near europe uh, France, Germany, the Netherlands particularly, Switzerland a few, um, and just occasionally we also get someone from America or Japan that's really interested in steam railways and they just have to make a visit to this railway while they're in the UK. Uh, but, but mainly local people, you know, having a day out is the biggest form of our traffic, yeah. Do you think that the railway is an important part of tourism on the Romney Marsh? Uh, yes, I do. I mean, I guess I'm bound to say that. But, you know, if you think of 150,000 people spending their money in this area, they'll have uh, bought some fuel locally, they'll have bought perhaps some food locally, um, adding value, they'll be staying in hotels and things like that. So it generates a reason to come to Romney Marsh, or if you're already here because you love the countryside and the wildlife, then, of course, it's a way of seeing that in a relatively uh, calm and pollution-free manner. A little bit of smoke from my engines, of course, but generally pollution-free. Coming over that, is the railway an important um, factor in jobs, uh, creating jobs in the local area? Uh, yes, it is. I mean, we're the third biggest employer. Romney Marsh isn't full of major industries. The nuclear industry, of course, is very important at Dungeness. We've got a very uh, large marsh academy in New Romney, which... Uh, has a lot of staff and, and pupils but beyond that we are the next biggest employer it's not a place with lots of jobs i employ 53 people at the height of the summer i have 120 volunteers that come and help as well um, so we're quite a big part of the employment scene here yeah um, um, is it involved in training people to run the actual trains themselves and can they go off to get jobs in other railways certainly can. I did myself. I learned to be a train driver on this railway uh, and a signalman and many other activities and then went on to manage large parts of the uh, networks. Um, so people, lots of people do that from here. Uh, equally, people come and work here when they retire because it's, it's a great place to be and when they perhaps don't want to, uh, to be in central London or somewhere like that. Um, specifically, we do our volunteers and our some of our paid staff uh, are trained on site. It's We've got people who've the best knowledge of this sort of industry in the world and they're teaching others all the time uh, including apprentices who are paid and including volunteers who just want to gain some skills yeah. so you run a tourist attraction uh, on the marsh uh, in your opinion do you think that tourism is what's going to keep the marsh going or do you think it will be something like the power station or a possible airport at lid uh, my view is we need a, a combination of those. Uh, I don't think the railway and tourism al alone will give enough employment to our young people. Um, I think we should be looking forward, and indeed I join many groups and uh, committees to help that happen, because we all uh, bleed off of each other, we get trade from each other. Um, so no, I don't think in isolation tourism will do it, but I think it's very important that while we don't know the answer to these other things, we don't sit still, and that tourism grows as much as it can now, because at least 10 or 20 jobs right now is better than waiting for possibly 500 later on. So it's all about you know looking after today and doing our very best to get uh, our young people employment. Yeah.